welcome back to At The Crease, the show which takes you behind the scenes of the Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship. And today the news is official. Liam Plunkett signs a deal with Major League Cricket. And At The Crease with me now is Liam Plunkett. Uh, Liam, let me begin by saying congrats on your new deal. Yeah, over the moon. Obviously it's official. I've got the polo shirt on, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's official. The papers have been signed and as I said, I'm... I'm excited and I can't wait to, to get started. Yeah, when you look at it now, what made you decide that now was the right time to, to make this type of move for your career? For me, it was sort of my last year at Surrey. Uh, it's been a great club with the pandemic. And uh, obviously I was with England the first year and didn't really get going this year. Uh, it was in the back of my mind at some point I wanted to come across to the States. Uh, I'm still going to try and play some white ball cricket in England. Because uh, obviously the, the minor leagues, major league doesn't take the full year up. But I just thought at this point in time, obviously it's exciting that the minor leagues are starting. There's a lot of good cricketers coming through the major leagues next year. I feel like I'm still relevant in the game and I'm playing at a high level that I can help some of the youngsters come through uh, and still make obviously good contributions myself and sort of lead the way. And as I said, help build cricket in America. Oh, well, Liam, this show is about more than cricket as well. And uh, one thing that people say is that you can tell a lot about a person uh, by what they watch on television. So out of curiosity, Liam, what television series are you currently watching? I think I've watched them all in the last two years, to be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, there's a show in England that's pretty big called Gogglebox. That uh -huh. uh, me and my wife watch, was quite, which is quite funny. But uh, anything on Netflix that's got to do with like sort of a crime, sort of true crime, mm -hmm. uh, but right now, nothing. I think I just get lost up in uh, YouTube and podcasts and stuff like that. There's so much to watch and I'll end up going down the route of some sort of podcast show, but strength and conditioning or some uh, comedian or a lot of the stuff I follow is like uh, cricket as well as cricket is like the UFC and boxing side of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated with that. So I get caught up in rabbit holes with that kind of stuff. Now, I'm curious about that, that factor that you mentioned in terms of comedian. Do you see yourself being a future comedian, Liam? No, not at all. <laughs> that's, that's why I watch uh, TV and Netflix and YouTube so I can get my uh, my laughs out here. But uh, no, it, it's lighthearted, as I said, with a lot of the stuff going on in the world and how, how obviously it's been a rough year or so. It's actually nice to watch some lighthearted stuff and put you in a good place. Uh, definitely. And just flash yourself back now, because obviously in 2019, you were definitely on that high coming off of the World Cup. You had an amazing time, especially in that final did you really see it panning out this way for you after that final? Uh, I wanted to get involved in some, obviously, USA Major League Cricket. I, I didn't know that was an option right then. I know there was talks. There was talks uh, with the minor and major league happening, but I wasn't sure how and when it was going to happen. For me, in the World Cup after playing that final, I wanted to continue to play for England, but it wasn't to be, and that's fine. Obviously, they're going down a, a different route. Uh, obviously, I wish them guys well, but... Sort of after that, that winter, obviously going to America, I was in talks with different people and I was excited, but I also wanted to fulfill my contract with Surrey. Uh, as I said, I signed a three year there. And they were a great club and I wanted to fulfill that role. And it was just through sort of this winter when I went back to the States with my wife over Christmas, I got chatting to some of the guys in the major league and uh, we decided to make it happen. And it, it couldn't have worked out at a better time for me. Uh, I could have played in England full time for a few more years as obviously county cricket and stuff like that. But I'm so excited for the chance to be in one place and with America. Obviously, when they go big, they go real big in terms of sports. So I just wanted to get in right now. And I guess I didn't realize after that World Cup, if you told me the day after in two years time, I was going to be signing a contract with Major Leagues. So, yeah, I wouldn't have, wouldn't, wouldn't have believed you. But to think now that playing cricket at Exton Park with the Philadelphians, which is four and a half, five miles from my house, in America is, is unbelievable. So yeah, it's, it's panned out nicely. What are you personally hoping to achieve with uh, Cricket America and uh, the Major League? I think for me, going across there, I want, I want to play at the highest level uh, in terms of Major League Cricket. That's going to be a great competition. The minor leagues, by watching of the last few months on obviously Willow on YouTube and stuff like that, there's great potential and there's some great stuff going on there. There's some, as I said, some very good cricket involved in that. I want to come across and keep raising that standard, but also help uh, bring the youngsters through. I want to sort of help them sort of learn how to be at the top level. So when they do step up from the minors to the majors and hopefully to play for USA, 
uh, I could have helped them along that way. Uh, for my, my, as I said, my role is to be with the minor leagues, major leagues. I'm, that's pretty much where I'm at to help develop cricket and obviously showcase my skills and bring youngsters through. Well, your experience on the field is certainly there, but Liam, I have a curious question now. How, how good is your experience with riddles and trivia? <laughs> it depends what it's on, I guess. <laughs> hmm, Alrighty. So let's see, pick a category. We're going to go with either riddles or trivia first. Let's go trivia. Trivia. Okay. Hmm. Based on the number of innings, who was the fastest cricketer to 10,000 test runs? Was it A, Brian Lara, B, Sachin Tendulkar, or, or C, Kumar Sangakara? Uh, Sangakara. Sangakara. Is that your final answer? Are you certain? No, I'm not certain. They're all good players. Uh, uh -huh. I'm not a massive stats person. I just know they were very difficult to bowl at. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, Liam, this one was a trick question because all three of them reached it at the same innings mark, 195 innings. So I was right. Yeah, so in, was in, te in technicality. In one te from one, I'm taking, I'm taking it. One from one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's switch you over then to a quick riddle then. Hmm. What is always in front of you but cannot be seen? What is always in front of you but cannot be seen? Eh? Air. Mm, nice enough answer. Is that your final answer, though? You can see your nose. So no, maybe. Uh, <laughs> what's always in front of you? I'll go air. Huh? Yeah. Air. Okay. Well, I don't have air on my paper, but one of the answers is the future, Liam. The future. Ah. ah yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. But. When we talk about the future, William, the future certainly looks bright for you. And uh, I am certainly wishing you all the best as you come over to pursue your career and further it with cricket here in the United States. Thanks, mate. It was obviously great to, to chat to you. It's obviously exciting. I can't wait to get across the pond.